Welcome to a, another tier list. Uh, these are kind of a regular on these channel. On these channel, great. That's a lack of a script for you. Uh, no, uh, this, these are kind of a regular on this channel. Uh, because I just, honestly, I just think they're fun to do, really. Uh, just get to talk candidly, just unscripted. Uh, I work better in a edited slash scripted environment, but, uh, I do enjoy doing these from time to time, obviously. Um, but today we are ranking the Nintendo franchises. Yes, uh, I thought this would be fun because, well, I'm a huge Nintendo fan. I mean, for as much as I am a Nintendo fan, I will call them out in their various problematic business practices, which are highly questionable most of the time, but that's not a topic for today. Maybe, hopefully, never, but either way. Um, yeah, we're here to rank them today, and uh, I guess the elephant in the room here, first off, um, Bayonetta. Uh, <laughs> Bayonetta is not a Nintendo franchise, it is a Sega one, actually. Um, so I'm not exactly sure why it's listed here as one. But, I mean, it's there, so I guess we'll rank it, but anyway, either way, um, you can also see I have a no opinion section. Uh, that's there because, well, a couple of these I just have no opinion on. Uh, I will say this ahead of time, uh, which are Advance Wars and... Uh, which one was it? The Legendary Starfy. Uh, the latter of which I wasn't even aware was a Nintendo franchise. Uh, honest to God, I, I didn't actually think it was. But yeah, it apparently is, so whatever. Uh, but with that, we might as well just get right into it with Advanced Wars, but as I've already said, I have no opinion on it, because I have never played the series. Uh, I know the most recent release was um, Advanced Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp for the Switch, uh, which was in the uh, previous Nintendo Direct, actually, of which I reacted to. Um, but yeah, I haven't played it yet. I don't honestly have plans to play it, but if one day I do pick it up, I'll... I guess I'll mention it somewhere, but yes, it goes in no opinion. Uh, Animal Crossing, <laughs> okay. Uh, I love Animal Crossing. Uh, I start. I uh, my first Animal Crossing game was New Leaf back in 2013. Uh, it released in 2012, but I picked it up in 2013, the summer of that year, I believe. And uh, yes, I I really love. And because of the leaf, I fell in love with the series after that, and I was super, just super mega excited for New Horizons. And um, my opinion of New Horizons has definitely changed since release, like a lot of other people. Um, in hindsight, Horizons was maybe a little dis disappointing in some areas and aspects, namely the kind of lack of updates and just lack of content to keep you coming back after, say, the first month or whatever. But like, you look at New Horizons and compare it to Pocket Camp, the mobile phone Animal Crossing game, which I don't remember what year that released, my apologies. I think it was 2017, but that aside, you you compare New Horizons with Pocket Camp and you see all the just amazing items they have in there, and just it kind of feels like us Horizons players are cheated in a way with how much content Pocket Camp has, but you know, I realise that Horizons does have, you know, the, um, the landscaping feature which, you know, that's really cool, like getting to design your island the way you want it. That is, that is an amazing feature, but like, as I said, there's not a lot to keep you coming back after the first month, honestly. Uh, and that's kind of why I just it down and haven't really picked it back up since. I mean, I probably picked it back up since for um, B-roll footage, for talking about it here, but either way, I mean, I'm not, sh I'm not really sure. I would have put it at absolute best because of how, I, I honestly put it in, 
I put it in uh, pretty good. Feels like I'm doing it a disservice because of how much joy I got out of Lulu fans. Deep, you know, deep initial hours we did get on Horizon, so I'll put it pretty good. Arms, I have no opinion of, never played it. Uh, but you know, uh, not a Nintendo franchise, but uh, I mean, we'll talk about it anyway. Uh, I really enjoyed Bayonetta, uh, Bayonetta 1 and 2. Um, yeah, I think they're really fantastic beat em up games. Uh, Bayonetta 2, especially, which, oh man, I I enjoyed playing that so much on the Wii U back in the day. And uh, I know it, uh, both of them are on Switch now, but I have yet to pick up that combo pack. Uh, I do still play the first Bayonetta on Xbox One through backwards compatibility. Um, but yeah, they're just a really fun, just really fun beam up games that, yeah, I mean, just so much witty writing as well and just over the top action. It's really just, really just fun in a way, you know? And I'm super excited for Bayonetta 3, obviously, but <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Who even knows at this point when that's coming out? And for whatever news we do get about it, which hasn't been a lot since it initially got revealed in 2017, uh, it doesn't. It's always just, yeah, things are coming along okay, or even recently how I uh, came across a screenshot of Bayonetta's VA. Uh, <laughs> Kind of alluding to the fact how she probably won't be returning to the role for Bayonetta. So that's concerning in a way. But yeah, um, but yeah, I put it in amazing, honestly. I mean, actually, maybe I put it up to the best. Uh, I, I don't know. I think Bayonetta 1 kind of misses in a few areas, but I uh, will put it in amazing. <laughs> I can hear my cats meowing outside constantly for all my attention, but. She's gonna have to wait. Uh, Donkey Kong. Uh, Donkey Kong's a good franchise. I haven't played a lot of the games in it. Uh, I've mostly played the more recent ones like uh, Country Returns and Tropical Freeze. Uh, but I've always wanted to play Donkey Kong 64. Uh, but that's not relevant, really. But either way, uh, Tropical Freeze, as I've mentioned in previous videos in the past, it's it's amazing. It's one of the it's one of the best 2D platformers I think I've ever played, and that's that's kind of a bold claim. I do realise in s some areas, but like I when I played it for the first time, uh, I really don't remember when. Uh, that's the problem. Um, but I really remember enjoying it. Like it's a, it's got a great sense of challenge, and just platforming feels so satisfying, and it's just a lot of fun, you know. Um, and Donkey Kong Country Returns, I haven't played much of, but from what I did play, it was, you know, it was just like Tropical Freeze, but as you would expect, because like, it's the prequel to Tropical Freeze. Uh, so Tropical Freeze just built off what Country Returns, you know, already laid the groundwork for. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'll put in the same, uh, ranking as Bayonetta. Uh, Dr. Mario, I have no opinions of, uh, I mean, it's a puzzle game, which is already a bit of a hard sell for me, unless it's something like Tetris. But I guess it's. I think it's closer to something like Puyo Puyo, maybe. But uh, either way, I've never played any games. <laughs> Fire Emblem. Oh, I scuffed that one. Fire Emblem. Uh, I've never played a Fire Emblem game. But yeah, I have strong opinions on it. Okay, I, I'm kidding. I don't actually have that strong of opinions on the series. But like. <laughs> man, is it overrepresented in Smash? Uh, that's a hot take. Yeah, maybe that's, that's probably as cool as an iceberg. B boy. Um, I do. I do want to play Fire Emblem Three Houses someday, but like, I don't really have the motivation to actually buy it and then play it. You know. Uh, see, Fire Emblem's one of those franchises I keep showing interest in at times, but. If I don't capitalise on that interest immediately, I then, well, lose the interest and then I just don't have the interest to then play it, you know? Uh, it's a weird one, honestly, but um, yeah, I guess we're going no opinion because I haven't played any games. 
Uh, F0 would be the same case, but man, oh man, oh F0 is kind of a, it's one of those games that people are clamoring for another game for, you know, because it's been like, oh, I think it was, no I have notes here, give me a second, no that's right, yeah, um, the last F0 game was in 2004. Which I was initially under the impression that uh, GX was the last F Zero game in 2003 for GameCube, but no, it was um, F Zero Climax for I think it was the Game Boy Advance. Yeah, in 2004. But damn, it's gone. Up, it's been on hiatus for so long, over uh, close to 17 years, really. Um, I remember one time Shigeru Miyamoto mentioned that they just can't think of a control scheme for F0 that would work. It's like, man, you got so many buttons to work with and so many different control configurations. Just, it's got to be a way, man. But, like, yeah, it's, it's one of those challenging races. I don't know why I'm just speaking my opinion here when I don't have an opinion, but anyway. Uh, Golden Sun, same case, don't have an opinion for, but it's another one of those series that happens to be uh, one that's been on hiatus for a while, uh, a good 11 years almost, uh, last one being 2010, uh, which was, oh what was it, check my notes here, uh, Dark Dawn, uh, I'd never actually heard of that one before, but it's also a series that uh, Isaac, the uh, main character for, the main protagonist, uh, Isaac appears as a assist trophy in Smash Bros. As a character that a lot of people do want as an actual fighter, which I mean, Golden Sun's got an interesting legacy behind it. It is, I'd say, a cult classic, but yeah, either way, he goes in no pain. Kid uh, I've only ever. No, that's a lie. I have played the original through um, Virtual Console, stuff like that, but. The only actual game, the, the only game of the series I've actually played through properly is Killer Cross Uprising, and I love that game. Just, it's such a really fun on rails shooter type of game with just absolutely amazing character writing. It's so funny. Just like, it's re okay, I mean, humor's subjective, of course, obviously, but to me, it was really well written and I just such a fun game to just play and it's like for as much as people complain about the, the control scheme of Uprising which yeah I'll, I'll admit it's a bit <laughs> it's honestly kind of weird but it honestly wasn't a problem for me and I don't actually think it's that bad I think it's very easy to get past if you just stop complaining and play the actual game uh, but with that in mind, it goes in the same category as DK and Bayonetta for the fact that it Uprising was so good. Uh, Kirby. Uh, first Kirby game I ever played was Epic Yarn. I don't remember what year, but it's at least after 2010 maybe. Uh, I really enjoy Epic Yarn. I think it's a nice, cute little game you can just sit back and relax with someday. But. The next game I played after that wasn't until Planet Robobot, which I think was 2016. And initial thoughts on that Robobot weren't exactly positive, but upon a second playthrough, I came to love it. Like, Planet Robobot is generally one of the best games I've ever played, and one of the best Kirby games easily. Um, uh, saying this is one of the best games I've ever played it might be a bold claim. No, I'm sticking to that, yeah. Uh, I like Epic Yon, Robobot, are like two very different games, I realise, but they're still both platformers, which Kirby is, you know, a platforming series, so. Uh, would I put an absolute best? Yeah, I would actually, um, because those were two fantastic games. Uh, Luigi's Mansion is next, and I've only ever played Luigi's Mansion 2 Dark Moon. Uh, I do really want to play uh, Mansion 3 for the Switch, which uh, 2019 I think that was. I do really want to play that, but I've just never gotten around to actually buying it. Uh, same goes for the original, which 
while on GameCube, it is also it did also get ported to the 3DS, which I do also really want to play, but I haven't really been able to find a copy anywhere. So, uh, but from what I remember of playing Dark Moon, which it's been quite a while since then, I do remember really liking it. I do still think pretty highly of it. I think the um, it's such a unique type of gameplay that Luigi, Man Luigi Mansion has to offer, and for that alone, I think it goes in amazing. <laughs> the cat's still meowing. Uh, yep. Uh, the Mario Luigi series. Uh, same case with this one as with Luigi's Mansion, in where I've only, in which I've only played one game of, and that was Paper Jam. Uh, for what I know, Paper Jam is exactly <laughs> regarded, is exactly positively received. Which is what I'm trying to say. Um, but I, I thought it was good. I didn't think it was like totally amazing or something I have to drop everything just to immediately play or something. but I thought it was good I know that one of the praises for the game is the combat system but <laughs> I will admit you can break that combo system in half with Paper Mario but that's maybe a topic for another day but um yeah I do want, I do really want to play the ports of uh, Superstar Saga and uh, Inside Story but actually in fact I do own the original Inside Story uh, in on the DS, which I have played a bit of, but I'm really not that far into to give any substantial um, judgment. So yeah, but either way, I think I put in pretty good series. Um, ah, Mario Kart. Uh, Mario Kart. Nah, I mean, just get it out of the way. It goes the absolute best. Mario Kart is easily one of my favourite uh, car racing franchises, and just fantastic periods. Just having banger after banger. I initially picked up the series with Mario Kart DS, uh, followed up with Wii 7, 4, 4, 8, uh, you know, as you know, the usual path would dictate for most people. But yeah, I honestly think they're all fantastic games for what I've played. Uh, I've also played uh, Double Dash, which I think is good. I don't think it's as great as many people believe it to be, but I think it's still good. Uh, but yeah, I've played the majority of the series, I think it's, they're all just really fantastic games, just so good. Uh, DS, I, it's so nostalgic for me, I still enjoy going back to that. My God, Wii, it's, it's, you know, it's still really good to this day. It's definitely aged quite a bit with how it looks, it was character models, but everything else is still pretty fun about it. Uh, 7, I initially didn't think much of, but over the years I've warmed to, and it's, you know, it's, it's pretty fun to go back to now and then. Maybe not as often as, say, uh, Mario Kart DS, but yeah, it's still fun. Uh, Mario Kart 8, well, it's Mario Kart 8. It's one of the best kart races on the market, uh, evidenced by Mario Kart Deluxe, which was a port of Mario Kart 8, obviously. Still just pushing units to this day. And Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is easily one of my favourite kart races just ever, so yeah, it's, it goes in absolute best for a reason. Uh, next up, Mario Party. Uh, definitely a series that has fallen on hard times recently I'd say. Uh, I've, out of the games I've played for my party, I've played the one with the DS, my party DS as it's called, obviously, uh, my party 8, my party 9, and my party 10. I've also played maybe a bit of my party 6, but I don't recall anything of that, but uh, I know a lot of people don't <laughs> exactly like my party 9 or my party 10 because of the um, introduction of the car with how you're just in the car and not just moving around separately but I will admit I do actually really like my party 9 I think the minigame selection in there is like really strong and it just looks really nice as a game and I'll be honest I don't think the car thing gets too much in the way I think it makes for quirky games which is you know much helpful but um, but as a series as a whole I wouldn't say I have a strong opinion on it either end. I don't think overly negatively of it, which as I'm sure you can gather, but I don't think overly positively of it either. I think it's more of a, it's just an alright kind of series. I do still need to play Super Mario Party, but actually, I, I would put it in pretty good actually. I, I don't think it's really that bad. I do really enjoy games from what I played. My Party 10 was quite fun to play with family over the years but 
yeah, you guys are pretty good. Uh, Metroid, uh... I've only played Super Metroid on the Virtual Console, um, which is a real shame because I would love to play the Prime Trilogy one day, and it's a Prime Trilogy is something I've really wanted to play for years now, in fact, but I've never gotten the opportunity to. Uh, please port it to the Switch Nintendo. You know you can do it. You know you can. Come on. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Metroid Dread's coming out next month by the time of this video, and that's pretty exciting. So I'm really tempted to pick that up. But, uh, Dash Rush is, is just one I really want to, like, get my teeth into, you know? Before I played the Super Metroid, which was maybe half hour before I put it down, uh, <laughs> I haven't picked it back up since because I forgot to renew my Nintendo Switch Online, and, but I don't feel like doing that at the moment. But, um, before I played the Super Metroid, it's, you know, I mean, it's what spawned the uh, Metroidvania uh, sub-genre again, you know? And I thought it was really good for what I did play, and yeah, I might pick up Metroid Dread, so I kind of feel like, I kind of feel weird ranking this one. Um, we'll put it in pretty good for now. Maybe that will change in future, but I, I guess we'll see. Uh, mother and Mother. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have no opinions on these, but... Mother, in a confusing sort of fashion, kind of like the Final Fantasy thing where Final Fantasy 3 released as Final Fantasy 1 in the West, but in Mother's case, Mother 2 released in the West as Earthbound. And uh, yeah, the, the last Mother game was Mother 3, which is still exclusive to Japan, I mean, in an official sense, but there have been like fan cartridges made of it since then, but like, yeah, I have no opinion on these two because I've never played it, I mean, it's not exactly like it's totally accessible, but, you know, Nintendo should just like make Earthbound Beginnings just available on the virtual console already, like, come on now. Uh, Paper Mario, oh man, oh man, I, Paper Mario makes me feel sad. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's no secret that Paper Mario has kind of fallen on hard times recently. That's more appropriate here than it was with, like, Mario Party. But, um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people argue that the last good Paper Mario game was Super Paper Mario, which I have actually played, but that was, like, years ago. And I, um, I guess in hindsight, I did think it was pretty good. Uh, I didn't get far into it, I don't recall anyway, but we're talking years ago, like maybe, I really don't know, this was ages, over a decade ago, probably, but who knows, uh, and then after that came Sticker Star, and, oh boy, uh, this is not the place for that, this is not the place for that, but yeah, you know, it kind of, series kind of just went downhill from there, I haven't played Origami King, uh, I didn't pick up Color Splash because of how Sticker Star was. I played Sticker Star as well, and like a lot of people, I was just disappointed by it. And all just. Ah, uh, man. Ah, uh, but like, I did. I have played Super Mario, Man, like I just said. I do. I did think that was good. And in hindsight, I do think it's really good. Like, it's got one of the best stories told in any Mario game, easily. I, it's not high bar, I realise, but even so. And then there's Paper Mario Fantasy Door, which I would just love to play, but finding a copy of that is, without breaking your bank, is almost impossible. But, uh, I, I don't know. I'd say alright. I don't want to say not good, because it does obviously have good games in it, such as the original, such as the original 3. But, even so. Uh, Pikmin, no opinion of. I have not played a single Pikmin game. I frankly just have no interest in picking the series up. Uh, real time strategy game is not my type of thing, I will be honest. But it, you know, it all just looked pretty cute, and, you know, Pikmin 4 was forever stuck in uh, development house, which I've decided to call it Pikmin 4 Syndrome. Uh, but, no opinion of. Uh, Pokemon! 
absolute best, obviously. I mean, you know, for as much as people, you know, are pretty uh, divisive on recent Copeland entries, like uh, Ultra Moon, uh, Sword of Shield, I can't say there's any Pokemon game I actively hate. So, okay, maybe. <laughs> Other than Auras, but like, that's a different case kind of thing. Uh, it's not really a different case, my apologies. I just don't like Auras, but. It went, I wouldn't I wouldn't say Auras is bad, because I still think Auras is a good game, it's just not a good Pokemon game, if that makes sense at all. But overall, it's it's Pokemon, it's, it just hits, hits after hit, you know? I I did really enjoy Sun and Moon, I really enjoy Ultra Moon, Sun and Ultra Moon, I haven't played Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu, I just have my own chest. And I thought Sword and Shield were good, and I'm super excited for Great Diamond Shadow Pearl. I mean, sure, I, I'll, I'll call out the Game Freak on there. Bullcrap sometimes. I, I definitely will. I'm definitely not immune to the uh, the, the bullcrap that the series pulls off sometimes. But overall, I mean, it's one of my favorite series of all time. Easily. Just like, it's been 11 years since I was introduced to the series with Platinum. And I've just been on the, the train ever since, if you will. Punch out, same case as the others down here, I just have no opinion of. I would really like to play Punch Out for Wii though, that looks pretty good. Donkey Kong is a sequel boss fight, that's that's pretty good also. Uh Riven Heaven. Uh Riven Heaven is a Riven game, actually can probably tell by the title. Uh and it's <laughs> I have no opinion of again, I can never play it unfortunately. And I say unfortunately because it just it looks so charming. Like I <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm not a fan of Ripper games, I just never really like sunk my teeth into any. But like, it just looks such like such a charming series. I think the last one was in 2016 Mega Mix for the 3DS, which if I can ever find that out, if I can, ugh, words, jeez, if I can ever find that while I'm out sometime, maybe I'll pick it up, like for sure. But for now, it just goes no pain. Uh, Super Mario. I mean, you know, absolutely best, obviously. Because it's Super Mario, just it's the same case with Pokemon, except more so, in which it just hits with every single game. Like Galaxy, Galaxy 2, Odyssey, <laughs> 3D games. Just Galaxy 2 is easily is one of my favorite games of all time, and Odyssey is really high up there as well. So same with Galaxy, and just loads of the Mario games are just so damn good. Like, not the RPGs, Mario Kart as well, that's obviously in there as well, so, of course by default, it's already an absolute best, but, yeah, I don't really need to explain myself too much here. Uh, Super so Smash Bros, that goes in an absolute best as well, because it's Super Smash Bros, like, come on now. I was introduced to the series with Brawl back in, I think it was 2010, maybe, maybe 2011, I'm not too sure on the exact date, but, Ever since then, I've just been on the train that is Super Smash Bros. Or the high train, train if you will. And, you know, I, I wouldn't say my opinion on the recent one, Ultimate, has been, like, sabotaged at all with the community just going haywire over recent editions or whatever. But, like, I still love Super Smash Bros. It's so good. It's so fun to play. It's, it's just being the hype train is, you know, a little bit rocky. Here and there, it's it's still so fun. Splatoon. Uh, I mean, I can, I'll be honest. Like, it's been a few years since I've actually played Splatoon. I have played the two entries so far. Splatoon, Splatoon two, two. But I love them both. They're really good entries. They're sorry. They're really good games. Uh, I I got a lot of joy out of them. Uh, Splatoon one. That was like my summer game for the year. And that was just so fun to play. Splatoon 2, I may have played less, but less time into, and it wasn't too long before I just like sold the game back. But yeah, I remember having a good time. Uh, I haven't played it for years. I've been wanting to change that fact. But with Splatoon 3 on the horizon next year, sometime maybe, uh, I'll be sure to pick up them. And but you know, it goes in absolute best, honestly. And for a new IP from Splatoon, from Nintendo, like, in what before then was, the previous new IP before Splatoon was like Pikmin in 2001, so, <laughs> 14 years 
40 year difference, like, that's really something, that's not something to scoff at, just having a new IP like that all of a sudden just, like, really, be really good, just, uh, what would I say, anyway. Star Fox, no opinion of, uh, never seen this spawn on hard times recently. Uh, it, I do think Star Fox Zero deserves a second chance. I've never played Star Fox Zero, but I would like to. I do think it deserves a second chance on being ported to Switch, but that's obviously up to Nintendo, and I don't really know if they're up for the idea, but either way. Um, Legend of, Legend of Starfy, uh, no opinion of again, but, you know, I wasn't previously aware it was owned by Nintendo, so, I mean, that's enough for you to go off of. What you aware, no opinion of, again, uh, but I, I mean, I've had interest in playing it in the past, of course. It's similar to Rhythm Heaven, in which just, it's a sort of mini game collection, but it just looks so charming. Uh, I, I watched, um, uh, VTuber played for it recently, um, Sakona Sana. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, yeah, I, I do watch VTubers here and there, but either way, it, lo it looks fun. It looks a lot of fun, but I just don't want to, like, buy it for full price right now, so I'm probably going to wait till a price drop later on. Uh, moving on, however, uh, Zelo Chronicles. Of course it does. Of course it does. You'd be crazy. You'd be crazy if you thought otherwise. Zelo Chronicles. It's my favourite series. It's above Pokemon, it's above everything else. It is my favourite series. Zelo Chronicles 1, Zelo Chronicles X, and Zelo Chronicles 2. Just, they're all good. Monolith Soft does not miss. Sure, I think less highly of the original than most people do, but overall, they're still all amazing games. I haven't personally played the side stories for Chronicles 2 and Chronicles Defender Edition, which are uh, Torn and Golden Country and uh, Future Connected, but I've, from what I heard, they're really good. So, <laughs> that side, the main games themselves, just, oh man, they're so good. Zebra Chronicles 2, my favourite game of all time, obviously, and just, man, just, they've, they've always been such a good time. So, yeah. Anyway, moving on to Yoshi. Uh, Yoshi is one of those franchises where a lot of people argue whether it's actually good or not, but in my opinion, I do think it's good. Because, um, uh, the games I have played of the Yoshi franchise are Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island and Yoshi's Woolly World and I really enjoyed Yoshi's Woolly World and I really enjoyed my time with uh, New Island not New Island, sorry, um, Yoshi's Island and yeah, I just thought it was really good <laughs> and Woolly World is just the cutest thing ever it's just such a feel good game which is appropriate because it it's made by good feel but yeah, like I would have put it amazing. Uh, you know what? Hang on, I'm gonna put Kirby down here for a moment. And uh, sorry about that. Actually, I'll put it. I'll put it there. Yeah, I'll put it there. Alphabetical. Come on now, me. But yeah, I'll put it in the same one as Kirby is now. Because I do think it's a good series, for what I've played at least. But anyway, and finally we're on to The Legend of Zelda. Uh, fun fact about me, I've never beaten a mainline Zelda game. I've played plenty of them, such as Majora's Mask 3D, Skyward Sword, uh, Link Between Worlds, and uh, Wind Waker HD. But I've never actually beaten any of them. The only Zelda game I've actually beaten is a spin-off, and that's Hyrule Warriors. But, with that said, I do still think, from what I played, they were amazing games, uh, in a lot of the senses. I wasn't personally a fan of Majora's Mask, Majora's Mask, Majora's Mask, god that's awkward to say, uh, focus on time, only having like 72 hours of in-game time to do stuff, but like, I, at the same time, I also do understand that's the, that's the point of it, that's the appeal of it, to be under pressure, because, you know, big moon just facing you down constantly, that, the apocalypse even. 
but I do understand that. Skyward Sword, uh, <coughs> obviously that's, yeah, I've played that one the most, at least tried to play it the most. The furthest I've ever got into it was to the first temple, before putting it back down again, but like, I do really like Skyward Sword. I've seen Joe Conway's Let's Play Through of it enough times to at least have a solid enough opinion on it, and like, it's such a nice looking game, such a pretty looking game, and, like, well I do think it maybe. Well, this is going from like uh, a second person perspective here. Uh, conjecture, if you will. I do think it maybe like goes on a bit too long. Uh, yeah, I, I do think it's still a good game from what I have played at least. I know it's on Switch now, but like it, it's a port of a Wii game. I don't feel like paying full price for it. But that's uh, an entirely unrelated issue. And when we're KHD, you know, I thought it was alright. <laughs> I don't actually think much of it. I didn't get too far into it again, but yeah, I don't know. It's a very awkward series for me to actually um, say what I actually feel about it, given what I've just said, having not actually beaten any of the main games. Of course, Breath of the Wild. Of course, I've that's probably the furthest I've gotten into. But like, I haven't beaten Breath of the Wild either. Uh, I do think it's I do think it's a generally an amazing game. Though. The open world aspect of Breath of the Wild is it's it's honestly fantastic. But it, again, it feels weird rating putting this one. But given the series track record itself and how well just how successful it is, it's kinda like the Super Mario one, where it's just banger after banger, really. Uh I guess I would put it in amazing. It feels weird to do that though, given what I have said. But, well, yeah, we'll do it anyway. <laughs> okay. Alright, well, that's the list for you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I really do wish I had a, an opinion on a lot of these uh, series here. Uh, so it would have been more fair. But, like, you know, I'm. <laughs> I can't prove through every game on the planet, you know. <laughs> I'm only one guy. But um, I have at least given my thoughts on a number of them, at least, so there's that for you. But yeah, this is how the list is looking. I'm I'm pretty okay with this. The only one I even had to the only one I had to really change at all was the Kirby one. But yeah, from other than that, it's it's fine as is. <laughs> the not good section was pretty pointless to have there, but you know, it's it's there at least, just in case. Uh yeah, I mean, the top section might be, like, kind of generic, I would say, for a Nintendo fan to have, but, nah, who cares, it's my list, it's my tier list, even, so, uh, fight me, but, no, anyway, uh, this was a lot of fun, I, again, this is a type of format I do really enjoy, I get to talk about stuff I probably wouldn't normally get the chance to, or just, you know, talk in a more candid fashion, I, I keep saying candid, well, I don't even know if that's the right word to use, but uh, either way, I mean, this this is why I work better in the editing environment. But yeah, uh, we're done here. So if I mean, thank you for watching. If you got this far, it really does mean a lot to me. So yes, <laughs> see ya. I suppose, man. I'm so bad at this. Just end the video now, future me.